rusty. Huh? It's just rusty. Fine. That's that Lamborghini quality. So welcome everyone to a very, very special episode. I have just come across a barn find, an epic, epic barn find. It's actually not a barn find, we're in a warehouse, but I have come across something that makes me so excited because as you guys know, I am a very big fan of movie cars and I'm also a big fan of movies with really good car chases. Now, back in 2014, there was a movie that you guys might have seen called Need for Speed. And in that movie, they had a ton of supercars from the Koenigsegg Agera RS to the Bugatti Veyron and the P1. And all of those cars were fake. They were not real. They used some of the real ones for like some beauty shots, but all the rolling shots, those cars were replicas. And they were replicas not based on like a Fiero or a, or a Miata or an MR2 or something. They were actually based on something that I know pretty well, and it was called a Superlight SLC. And this is a mid-engined rear-wheel drive, basically a supercar that you build yourself. Now for that movie, they built around, I think, 20 cars, and I found a person that has purchased most of the cars after they were filmed, and here they are. <laughs> all of these cars were from the Need for Speed movie, the one with Aaron Paul in it, and all of these cars have a very interesting history, and today I'm going to buy one of them, and it makes me, oh, it makes me so excited. So let's take a look at what we have right here. We just have a four stacker of SLC Superlight chassis with some engines and various drivetrain configurations, and we're gonna go over all of them, but you can already see that they kind of sort of look like supercars. And the main cars in that movie were the Koenigsegg Agueras. They needed a bunch of those because, first of all, they had a three-wide race in the beginning of the movie, and then they had one at the end of the movie, the action-packed finale. So here's a Koenigsegg, that's a Koenigsegg, I think that's a Koenigsegg, I think one of the other ones is also a Koenigsegg. But that is, I believe, a Bugatti. Uh, this one, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, we can tell by the interior. Let's see what this is. Well, I, that might be a Koenigsegg. I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. But one thing that's really interesting is that these Koenigseggs, this one was actually the one that was driven by Aaron Paul. And you can tell because it has AC. You definitely want some AC when you're out filming and it has the Koenigsegg door, well, at least what looks like a Koenigsegg door hinge. So this thing comes out and this pivots on an angle because when he comes out of the car, you know, in his dramatic poses, he needs the door to do the traditional Koenigsegg thing. So the interior is almost all the way done and there's stitched leather here. It's actually not too bad, but right behind it, you can see it's, it's a bunch of tape and, all these gauges are, oh, well, they're, they're kind of fake. This is definitely fake. This car was actually an automatic. Uh, and these are LS4 engines with autos in them. And what's more interesting, if I come around the back, is that there's not a lot of engine back here. And that is because they had a person basically bolted into like a roll cage structure up here and they would drive the car and Aaron would just do, I guess, the acting because I think it's like a law that you can't act and drive at the same time. That's actually really kind of weird. These are LS4s. They're essentially front wheel drive just in the back of the car and they were automatic just because it made life a lot easier for filming and camera work and all that sort of stuff. Now up here, it looks like that's another maybe Koenigsegg. I think it is a Koenigsegg, yep. So these are gonna be like stunt cars. Keep in mind, these cars are also crashed. They were like rolled over and they had various accidents. This one has probably seen some better days, but you can see that they have their wheelbases and all these cars have different wheelbases. That's, that's a Spano uh, up there and that has a 110 inch wheelbase. Uh, this one has 104 inch. There's a 102 and a half. This was a Bugatti Veyron replica. 
and yeah you can see the Veyron style seats which is really really cool right here you can see Bugatti number two fixed rear wing this is so awesome I love seeing what's behind the curtain when it comes to movie cars like how they make the movie magic uh, and Honestly, if you look at these cars, everything's bolt on to the frame of the SLC. The SLC has this big aluminum, like really thick frame up here. They made their own tubular steel roll cage, and I think it worked out pretty well. Nobody got hurt, even though there were some really interesting crashes in that movie. Now, as much as I'd like to have one of these Koenigseggs and say, hey, I bought a fake Koenigsegg from Need for Speed, I have no use for a automatic car. It would be kind of a pain to put everything back and the fact is these bodies are not available like they got trashed in filming and I, I don't have any whereabouts on the bodies so the bodies are basically in your imagination you have to imagine a Koenigsegg body on top of this and to be honest with you I think the Koenigsegg was sort of the worst looking out of all of them because the wheels if you look at them they are just zip tied to some aluminum wheels back here and those are the wheels that were used on everything so they just had these kind of bolt-on uh, clamps here which works for filming you can't really tell but if I was to do something like this I mean this would all have to be completely custom and I don't really want a fake car to begin with I want to do my own thing so now comes the hard part which one do I pick so in order to help me with this decision, this very, very hard decision, I have employed the help of my friend, Jared. Hi. So Jared actually <laughs> came out here and he helped yeah. me find, well, he helped me look at all of these and kind of make a decision, but I, I have changed my mind. Yeah. Surprise, surprise, I changed my mind based on like what projects we're actually gonna do. Yeah, things changed because initially, it was an easy choice. You needed the big boy, the 110 inch. Yeah, so that would have been that. That would have been a Spano. And the, the Spano is a Spanish hyper supercar. Uh, and it's really, really cool, other than the fact that nobody knows what it is. So I was having issue with maybe doing that and then saying I got a fake Spano, but nobody knows what that is. So uh, I was worried about YouTube views, but I was going to put a Lamborghini V12 in there and then make my own sort of super hyper car. Uh, but since then, I got another use for my Lamborghini V12, so I don't need to put a V12 in there. I yeah. could put something else in there. Or you can keep the engine that's in it because the automatics were the LS4. All of the manuals are GM Performance LS3 engines, which make, I think, 400 and some odd horsepower at the crank with a warranty if you buy it from GM. I think we're outside of the warranty. I think we're probably outside of the warranty here. I <laughs> but, think this is not counting. But they're very potent LS engines. So just on their own, I I kind of want to take one of these home and just like make an exo cart. Just slap some lights on it. And I mean, this is already an exo cart I mean, if you just, look at it. They're not exactly, it's not like brimming with yeah. body panels here. Just put some lights on it and uh, drive it. I think the Koenigseggs are really cool, but I think those are out. I mean, uh, they have air conditioning, which is nice, but it's an automatic. Like air conditioning does not overcome third pedal. So yeah, the Kona's eggs are gone. You don't need the wheelbase. Mm -hmm. The ones on top don't have really anything else. And that one's spoken for. You've yeah. already done fake Bugatti. Yeah, I have, and I, I have no, no need to do another one. Uh, that's gonna be really hard to get down today. That's so, Spano. So how about we walk over and show them the one you did pick? Okay, let's, let's go do it. Because it looks really cool. <laughs> it is. Hey everyone, it's me from the future. I forgot two things to mention to you in this video. Number one, that orange shirt makes me look like an Oompa Loompa. Yes, I know, stop writing that in the comments. And number two, why did I get this car and what kind of company would insure a car that looks like that? Well, I got it because it's really, really cool. And the kind of company that would insure it is the kind of company that would insure all my cars. They know that I buy cars that are a little bit different. And the way I found that company is through today's sponsor, Policy Genius. So if you guys don't know what Policy Genius is, it's a super easy way to compare your home and auto insurance in one place. So if your home and auto policies are almost up for renewal, let Policy Genius look for a lower rate for you. The way it works is very, very simple. First, head to policygenius.com slash Tavarish and answer a few quick questions about yourself 
and your property. Then Policy Genius will show you your price estimates for policies that fit your needs and help you find the best option. So Policy Genius works for you, not the insurance company. So if they find a better rate, they can switch you over for free. And they absolutely do find better rates because Policy Genius has saved customers an average of $1,250 per year over what they were paying for home and auto insurance. Now, if I had an extra 1,250 bucks, well, I'd buy more car parts. So head to policygenius.com slash Tavarish to get started right now. That's policygenius.com slash Tavarish. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Take a look at this. <laughs> We're not getting that? I mean, I wouldn't complain. It's got the right color, but... Okay, so we're, it's not the smart car, it is this. So this is the replica of the Lamborghini Sesto Elemento. And it has some, uh, some non-standard parts from the movie. So this is actually from, I believe, the Spano. It could be either the Spano or the Koenigsegg, I don't know. Uh, but one thing that's really cool is that this was the bad guy car, and you can tell that this is also the car that they used for some interior shots because the interior, there's like carbon fiber everywhere. It's not real carbon. It's just like vinyl carbon overlay, but it's still cool. Uh, it has a fiberglass seat because they use this for interior filming. I believe Tanner Faust drove this, and one really interesting thing is that it is a manual. It has a five or six speed. I don't know if it's a five or six speed. It depends. I think it is a Porsche six-speed. Take a look at the engine. The engine is an LS3, and I mean, other than just using it for filming, this thing is brand new. This is a crate engine straight from GM Performance, and then they made it with a uh, adapter plate down there with a Porsche transaxle. And if you look down here, they have the cover that they made out of fiberglass uh, <laughs> to replicate the, to replicate, yeah, the, the Graziano. The I Graziano, yeah. <laughs> I was, like, I was like, wait a second, that's not right. And then I'm like, oh, Lamborghini. It's got to look like the Graziano. That's, that's right, yeah. So the Sesto Elemento has that. And the Sesto Elemento was sort of kind of based on the Gallardo, but everything was carbon fiber. It was super light. It had the sequential uh, gearbox from that. It had the 5.2 liter. And honestly, if we were to make something out of this, it makes sense that we would put like a Lamborghini engine in it. So like right. if I got a 5.2 liter or something, I think it would yeah. it would but work pretty it well. It would work and it's about the same length as the LS, so that works really well. And then even just going into the performance, you can tell they were made to be driven hard oh, by yeah. small things. If you look, this is a fuel surge tank. Yeah, so you have a fuel surge tank there. That's, that's some yeah. race car stuff. And that's, so if you go into a hard corner, you can pull fuel away and the car would cut off. So you certainly can. That's what that lives there for. Uh, you also have a uh, inboard suspension here. You have, um, this is like almost F1 stuff. This is super light SLC, like standard but it's, it's in good shape. Uh, QA1 shocks, uh, which are okay, I guess. Uh, we could always upgrade those, but everything else seems to be in great condition. And I say great, it's, it's all rusty. It's probably not put together well. I wouldn't really trust this in an accident, but it's really cool. I, I just, right. it's so cool. It is really cool. And I kind of want to see if we can maybe start it. You think we could start it? I bet we could. And then I've also gotten word there's uh, there was another movie car that was here that is currently being rebuilt that may be worth the field trip to go look at too. Yeah. So let's try to get this running so we can go drive and look at that. Sure. Okay. Okay. I mean, How's that I'm sound? Not, it's like current. It's it's raining outside. If we go up here, you can see what the front end of this is like. Uh, you have this massive air dam here, and this goes into the radiator, which is back here. Actually, the SLC had a slightly different uh, variant of this. The radiator actually went the other way. But we have the gas, well, we have the clutch pedal, and we have the brake pedal, and then what else do we have? Uh, you have your mechanic, or your steering rack, which yeah, is but, just... But why, why are there three, three things there? Uh, so it runs dual reservoir on your brake master cylinder, front and rear. Oh, or, front uh, and rear, yeah. So race can, car stuff. Uh, gotcha. And these are uh, headlights from the Koenigsegg. Yeah, but they're sitting here, so they're part of... So they're part of this car now. <laughs> uh, I also like that they included HIDs with this. Oh, yeah. They could have put halogens on it. No. But HIDs were just, yeah. You need that white color. And so. this has the same just bolted on wheel, wheel covers. Uh, really cool. 
you come back here, you can see that there's dual calipers uh, because Tanner Faust or Reese Millen or whoever drove this car uh, was probably drifting it, but one of these calipers isn't plumbed up. So this was likely a like a standard that they just built all the cars to? Yeah, they were all ordered the same way because I know the Bugatti had the second master cylinder lever and one of the other cars did as well. So it's just a matter of we plummet and you have a drift brake ready to go. What, it's weird because a Bugatti is like a, like a four wheel drive car. It's not meant for any sort of slideways action, but let's try to see if we can get this thing to start. And oh yeah, that's, this is good for rear end protection. Yep, that's not going to protect anybody's rear end. You definitely want the tank uh, to be opened up inside the cabin. Right, that's normal. Yeah, this will be positive. It's all black, but this goes to red, so I'm assuming... Yeah, yeah. That will be hot, so... Just connect them until the sparks stop. Normally you want a battery. 30 miles. That's 30 miles on it. 30 miles. That engine's barely broken in. Oh. Take a look at this. This is a Celine S7, except for the fact that it's not. So this is a replica from the movie. Right here, I believe, is the original movie sort of chassis that they put uh, on, on film. You have the SLC underneath. Uh, this was a manual, has an LS3, just like the one I just got, has a dual calipers in the back but everything else was made completely custom. Oddly enough, if you get a Celine S7 part, it will actually bolt on. It will actually like fit up on this car because they use the original CAD files for these cars. Obviously they have to have the game as realistic as possible. So they have these cars scanned, they have these cars 3D scanned, and then you just get a part and uh, put it right in there. That's, that's how it works, right? Yeah, it just, you know, like magic, but mm -hmm. this this is an insane amount of painstaking work. I saw the progress that had been done to this when I first did your scouting mission, and it is having uh, actually seen an S7 sitting inside an S7 before, which it's a rare car. There's a hundred of them. It might be better than the real thing because I see a little bit more space than the real one. Yes. The real one, like your seat starts like here, <laughs> like you have no room for anything. Uh, actually, I, I do know that when you get a Selena S7, they have to fit you for the seat, yeah. and then they bolt it in place. Yeah. Uh, so this position, yes. whereas this may have some adjustability. And again, there, there is substantially more cabin room. I was disappointed to not be able to drive an S7, where there might be hope to drive this thing. Maybe, but you can see right here, uh, like on all the cars, they have the chassis uh, S7, number two, they had uh, different cars that had like stunts done with them. They had beauty shots, interior shots, all that stuff. This was uh, in the last race, uh, the one that they call the De Leon where Michael Keaton was announcing and this is insane. This is really crazy. Um, if I wanted to buy this car, <laughs> not happening. Not happen. If, if I wanted to buy something that looked like this car and you just made the molds and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a challenge, Jared. <laughs> you look snug, Freddy. This is very comfortable. I believe that steering wheel does remove. Oh, that steering wheel comes off, Freddy. Here. Oh, it does it? Yeah, okay, squeeze, so. squeeze oh, forward. thank goodness. Squeeze forward <laughs> as you punch yourself. And 
Are, are you sitting too tight to it now? It won't no, come no, off? no, it's... There we go. Oh, this is, <laughs> this is a world of change. It's just rusty. Fine. That's that Lamborghini quality. Well, how about you put it in reverse and then start it? Because then I'll start just going that way. There's only a quarter million dollar cigar boat right there. It's fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna press it all the way. Okay. No, that's just yeah. Give it more until you can engage it. Making a really bad noise. Just keep going until you can engage. Now, go quick. More clutch. It's not, it's not gonna do anything. Yeah, well, just keep giving it clutch. I believe in you. It's going to break the teeth off. It's not gonna break the teeth off. Just do it. Now put it in reverse. Keep giving it more clutch until it engages. It's all the way down. Smell that? Look at that. Look at that. That's dust burning on the engine. That's push. He's push. Push it in. All right, so now we have this on the trailer. It runs, but it does not drive. It makes a very loud sound coming from the clutch. And we found out that it was actually shooting sparks from the clutch, which is... Uh, exactly how a clutch should work. Yeah. Grinding that flywheel. Self-clearance. Well, I am super excited. Uh, this is going to be going to Jared's shop uh, and just like chill in there for a little bit until I figure out what's going on because I don't actually have a plan for this car. You guys should let me know. Yeah, that's, that's actually a better idea. You guys should tell me what I'm gonna do with this car because I have zero plans for it. Uh, I definitely wanna get it started and running and driving and I wanna make sure that it doesn't uh, blow up or kill me because that would ruin my weekend. But until then, I really want, I want to thank Jared because uh, he helped, you know, get this thing moving and on the trailer and all that stuff. And I'm super excited to get this underway. But until next time, this is me reminding you guys that on cars like these that have uh, a little work ahead of them, you guys need to build them better. And to do that, you need to wrench every day. Right, right there, roadside assistance. There. You can actually buy these. That was discontinued. Wrong channel! Oh.